So who out there has ever asked the question, just where exactly can I take off and land my drone from when it comes to geofencing, both when you're at home and when you're traveling? Today I'm gonna to talk to you about what exactly all these magical twister dots mean on your geofencing map on your drone and how you can fly and where you can fly safely. So let's roll. So welcome back everybody, my name's Steven and I'm coming to you today from Los Angeles because I'm here on vacation for a week and I thought what better thing to do when you're traveling but to travel and do a vlog and this time on geofencing on drones, a very sexy and fun topic but a necessary topic if you're a drone pilot. So let's just delve right into it and discuss the tips and tricks and how to navigate these funky little dots and what it means for where you can take off, fly and land. So straight up, what exactly is a geofence or geofencing for your drone? So geofencing is a feature that uses a drone's GPS receivers to automatically enforce warnings or restrictions based on where the drone is flying. The system is typically integrated with the drone airspace and digital airspace that certifies no-fly zones and areas where there are active drone restrictions. That's a lot of jargon and a lot of text to basically say you can take off or you can't take off with your drone, no matter the weight, the class, the size, as well as the license of what you have, unless your license allows you to fly in specific areas. Smile, my friend, you're now making your Los Angeles camera debut. So regardless if your drone is a Mavic 2 Pro or a Mavic Air 2S or a Mavic Mini or a DJI Inspire 2 or an Autel drone, all these drones come with firmware that also allows for the ability to upgrade their geofencing. And this is important that you make sure you keep up to date when you're about to fly your drone. Just check the night before, see if there's any upcoming firmware updates and geofencing updates. This is important also for the reason that many places will apply to have geofencing rules put in place. So one week it might be fine to fly in an area. The next week, however, it might be restricted based upon restrictions that that area might put in place. Thus, you should always know where you're about to fly and if it's safe to do so as well as legal. So how do you navigate all these crazy little circles and color-coded fun on your geofencing map? Let's check it out. So there are eight different DJI geofencing zones and they are red for restricted zones, gray for altitude zones, blue for authorization zones, yellow for warning zones, orange for the enhanced warning zones, the kind of like a mauve slash aqua color for the regulatory restricted zones and green for the recommended zones. What this basically breaks down to is that red is a no-go. Red is a restricted zone saying that which appear in the red area, the go app will be prompted with a warning and the flight is prevented. So essentially your drone is gonna to get to that red zone, it's gonna hit the area and the fence is gonna stop. Now that can be dangerous for drone operation because depending upon your battery, if your drone hits that area coming back to you, it will land when it runs out of battery juice. So make sure you're not flying anywhere near a red zone or trying to attempt to get in it. So the gray zones are altitude zones and just do not fly anywhere near that. That is often associated with airports and helioports, hospitals, police, fire departments, that could be military, government installations. Just don't fly anywhere in that area. That's number one for your own safety and the public safety, but also for other drone users because when people do this kind of thing and fly in areas that are restricted, it impacts all of us drone operators, both commercially as well as for professional use too, because every time a drone goes in these airspaces, more regulations come into effect. So just don't fly anywhere near the gray zones or especially near airports or helioports. So blue, much like gray, don't fly there. That's often associated with runways and heliport takeoff areas and situations in which airports have airspace control. Don't fly anywhere near there. You'll often see them as a crisscross pattern on your map, kind of looking like an X, and usually they're within an airport zone. Just avoid it completely. Now here comes the gray area. Not the color, but kind of the area which you can fly in. And that is the yellow zones. So yellow zones are often areas of height restrictions that can be very close to areas that are red or blue or gray. And you might think that your drone can fly there because it will take off in the case of many DJI drones. So this is a, a warning zone. So kind of like a restricted airspace, but not a restricted airspace in which you cannot fly. However, many of these areas are near areas like blue, red, or gray, or dark orange, in which you cannot fly. So be very careful operating your drone here. You'll have to find that there is height restrictions, there's restrictions in the area in terms of any kind of uh, public movement or safety and that sort of thing. So be very careful operating these zones, but your drone can fly if you have a license and you have authorization to do so. So one area to consider, certain areas allow for that yellow consideration, but just be very careful operating your drone within yellow geofencing areas. 
So similar to yellow, but more restricted are the orange zones. These are the enhanced warning zones. So in these zones, you'll be prompted by GEO at the time of flight to unlock the zone using the same steps as an authorization zone. So you have to have authorization in which to fly in these areas. In many cases, the orange zones will require a verified account. Now that can be with authorization to fly, that can be with a license to fly, or unlocking the ability to operate your drone in these areas. But as I said before, this needs to be established well in advance of your flight as your drone will A, not take off, but while you're operating within it, you have to have the requirements in which to fly in case you are questioned, approached by anybody of law enforcement or of uh, officials in that area. So orange areas you can fly in, but you have to have the proper documentation as well as the unlocking ability for your drone to take off. So it's really cool to be doing this in Los Angeles because these maps of Los Angeles are very detailed when it comes to the different bubbles and area zones in which you can fly. There are many airports in Los Angeles, four or five I'm guessing, correct me if I'm wrong, but these airports are dotted around the area of downtown and as such, you cannot fly within their restricted airspace. You are responsible for your drone. Your drone is your operation and whatever happens on that flight, is your responsibility. So take that into consideration when you're operating it. So aside from all the geofencing colored fun, always make sure that you have the proper classification permits or licenses to operate your drone, regardless if you're flying at home or if you're traveling abroad. For example, in Canada, we have two types of licenses. We have the basic and we have the advanced. I have my advanced certificate, which allows me to operate my drone in various areas and conditions. Now, this also allows me to operate my drone safely and also it's insured because I use it as a business. In the States, when you're operating your drone, make sure you get the proper permits or the classification to operate your drone within that city. So whenever you're flying downtown or you're flying in the country, just check in to see what you need before you take your bird off into the air. So drone geofencing fun. I hope these ideas and tips and tricks that I use daily when it comes to drone operation can help you too. Always make sure you've updated your firmware. Always make sure that you've updated your geofencing to the latest geofencing of whatever area you're flying in, regardless if it's home or you're traveling abroad. And please hit that like and subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on all the videos I have coming up on everything from drone tips and tricks to cameras to tech reviews and gear reviews and editing reviews and ideas on how you can maximize your photo and video game. Until next time, get your drone out there, but fly safely and know where you're about to take off. I'll catch you later.